Yo, what's good? Um, literally just woke up maybe like eight minutes ago, but I could not like do this breakdown of this entry because a lot of you struggle with entries, right? <laughs> you guys struggle with entries, like you'll be correct on the in general direction and you know the direction of the trend, but after that you'll get stopped out normally and then actually you know it'll go like 100 pips or 50 pips in your favor whatever your target goal was so i'm going to break down this injury and why i took it on the swing trade and it's crazy because the process is the exact same way every time so i started off on the daily time frame right just doing some basic analysis i drew in my zones on usdjpy I'm looking for a swing trade here so as you can see um this is a level of resistance right here, which would give me an opportunity to actually get in on a pullback because I was expecting a reaction once price reached this level on the, on the daily, um, which I got. As you can see, we've had multiple rejections right here of resistance happening, but the, the this trend strength of this actual pair was extremely strong, so I was definitely expecting it to push past this level um, in the next week or so. Um, really easily. So I was like, let me hop in now on the pullback on the four hour based on the daily's price action. You can see that the daily has been rejecting down back into this area, my golden zone Fibonacci area for several days now, um, basically since the beginning of the week. So I drew in my zones like normal and I dropped down to the four hour. After I dropped down to the four hour, I drew in just a basic bullish trend line, right? And then I drew in another bullish trend line right here, kind of fine tune where the trend actually was. And when I zoomed in, it was actually on this specific candle. When I zoomed in, this candle was actually bearish and it had already partially touched this area. Okay. So I'm just like, okay, well, let, let me, let me, let me kind of see what the rest of the counts to the left are doing. Whenever you're in doubt, look at the price action to the left because how you determine what's going to happen is what by what already happened via price action. It's pretty obvious. So I, I did notice that there were several reject, uh, you know, rejections of this area on the four hour. Um, and it specifically touches on my Fibonacci. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself, I actually drew my Fibonacci from um, from this point right here, this little wick right here, to um, this point up here, basically where this um, kind of impulse last last impulse move happened for the for the uh, uptrend. And I noticed that the uh, the uh, my golden zone actually let me delete that my golden zone lined up perfectly with this old level of resistance right here. Yeah. So that's confluence number one right there that I had, as well as, um, you know, I had, let me open these up. I had a pretty obvious rejection, um, reject multiple rejection of this exact same area. And I was looking, I'm just like, okay, well, you know, if it's rejected this area like five times before, it's going to do it again. It's obviously not going down. And these are just the, the actual banks getting ready. To, they're creating liquidity right here. All of this right here that you see is banks creating liquidity. So basically they, 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 uh, they met this level of, um, they met, they met this level on the daily and they decided they didn't, they didn't have enough liquidity in order to put, validate pushing price up anymore. So they wanted to build liquidity. So their job is to place a bunch of sale orders right here, right. And kind of make convincing candles by doing so, um, for people who to think that this is a sell, you know, the retailers, so I noticed that th this area had multiple rejections and they lined up perfectly with my golden zone, um, kind of Fibonacci area zone right here that I kind of drew in, um, I hit the 50 and the 61.80% level. And I'm just like, dude, that's so perfect. This is actually a perfect setup. Most people would like, okay, I'm not taking the setup because it's going down. You know what I mean? But you have to look at price action. It's going to be the most important thing. So I noticed there's multiple rejections. I'm just going to highlight some of the candles. I'm going to count this as a rejection because it is, um, it's not a rejection of my golden zone area, but it's still a rejection. And let me fix that real quick. So that's one rejection right there that I highlighted, right? Let me pull this up a little bit. Let me make sure this is actually straight because I'm like really OCD about my trading. Like it has to be not really perfect, but like pretty on there. So that's one rejection right there. And let me see if I can just like make this a little faster. So this one rejection of my actual golden zone right here, which was number one for me. And then you had... Um, and the, the, the golden zone ones are going to be the most like high, you know, high confirmation, high confluence one in terms of price action. Um, that's another rejection right there. Let me move this in a little bit. You know, these things are kind of hit or miss. I swear these little, this little tool right here, it's like good if you're not use it, but like, so some people can get them really, really small and like basically perfect. And I need to be able to do that because I'm really OCD. Um, get over there. So that's another rejection right there. Um, you know, you had, uh, 
another rejection over here. Technically speaking, it wasn't like a huge one, but it was a rejection. Another rejection right there. And normally what I'll do is I'll highlight the rejections myself for a visual. It just helps with being able to be like, yeah, these, these you know, are, these are rejected. You know what I mean? Um, these are rejections, but they happened way up here. I'm looking for something that's going to be happening kind of below, kind of more towards my golden zone. Um, and the really important ones are the uh, actual, the actual uh, uh, ones that, are, that touch my golden zone. You had a major touch right here who went deep into my golden zone. That's, that's a lot of confluence right there. This one was uh, this one was a beautiful one. So if you'd have caught the, you know, this golden zone entry, you'd have been good. Um, you just had a normal rejection right here, right? So I'm looking at price action to my left, like, well, you know, what, what has been going on? So, you know, like I said, bank leave a footprint of what they're going to do in terms of price action there, you know what I mean? They're going to, they're going to try to sell you on, this is a sell, you know what I mean? And et cetera, et cetera, to try to get you to sell into here and then take price up like they did right after I actually entered. This was a very beautiful rejection right here. Um, most people, would have, like I said, would have sold right here. You know, they would have been like, hey, you know, this is definitely a sell. Let me get in on this. And you would have been a huge mistake. Uh, you would have had another golden zone rejection right here as well. I believe this is a rejection. Yes, it's a rejection. That was a terrible one. You have to delete yourself. Okay. Whatever. There's another rejection right here. You can't see it because the actual um, risk to reward ratio was kind of covering it up. It's kind of blending in. And then this was the actual rejection that I got in on. So I noticed that this candle was right here. This candle right here that I'm getting ready to highlight was really bearish. Like it was coming down hard. And I'm like, it's going to be another rejection for sure. So I got in right here. Come on now. I got in right here where um, the actual um, candle started to kind of dip into my golden zone because I knew it was going to be a receding candle along with rejection because of all of the past rejections and the fact that it dipped into my golden zone several times before. I would say two times before that, three three times before that. So three times before that, and the other ones were all rejections of support. So they kept rejecting this level. Old support turns into new resistance, as you can see right here. Like I said, I have confluence. This is old support level. So you always got to look to your left when you're looking at price action. All of these rejections are not there for no reason. I could have waited the halfway point, like where, where my cursor is, which I should have done, honestly. But I already knew this was going to be a rejection, so I just got in um, on, on the receiving candle. This was actually a market execution right here um, on the receiving candle because when I was doing my post analysis, I noticed that this was pretty pretty much set up did pretty much perfectly. Um, on this another rejection right there, but this is what this this candle right here is going to be the most important one. Let me actually highlight this specific candle. Let me change the color of that because you totally cannot see that. Um, let me. Perfect. So this specific candle wick is where I actually got in. Ended up being a wick rejection. So in other words, he came down, and that rejection was actually in confluence. If you zoom out with my bullish trend line that I drew in see right there so what happened was it came back it retested my zone which was in confluence with my bullish trend line and then started to recede back i trusted my process and i trusted my actual trading plan and as soon as it dipped in there about this much i got in because my thought was that it was just going to reject for this part i didn't think about considering the bullish trend line so i could have waited till i got an actual recession of a candle from the bullish trend line that snapped an entry way down here just a little bit earlier by about like maybe eight or nine pips. Um, so looking here, you can see what happened. The actual candle that I got in on, which is this one right here, right, ended up seeing back. Then that resulted in a wick entry for a buy. Um, and then, you know, this candle as well rejected the same area. You know, it didn't quite make it as deep, but that's fine. And then after that, what happened? You know, it was that candle receded back as well, instant profit instant profit on the specific candle that I got in on right here, right? And then you have this candle right now. It's very rich. What do you think that this candle is going to do? Probably reject the same thing. It's going to do that maybe a few more times before they actually take price all the way up like they're supposed to. Um, so zooming out, this was a trade for, this is a trade for 348 pips right here. And I'm risking 50 pips with a proper, proper stop, you know, proper stop loss, proper, um, 
proper lot size and things like that. And that's pretty much it, guys. You have to pay attention to price action and what actually is going on because most people would have saw this as resistance right here and then that the banks were actually, um, or you know, it was actually getting ready to sell. No, it's, do you have any reaction to this level on the daily, which gives you an opportunity to get in overall on the overall trend on the pullback right here. Multiple rejections means that banks are doing a liquidity run. You can get in on the bottom, make sure that your actual stop loss is out of the range of the, um, the you know, I don't know, range of the wick and or behind an old low where you know they're not probably not going to come and retest. You can just look at to see where they're going to retest based on what they you know what they've already done. You can see right here, you know, rejection, 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 rejection. They haven't really had a reason to reject the way down here. It's not time for them to come back and come down for this liquidity right here yet. That's why they're taking price up and that's why they're doing the liquidity run because they still have to convince people that this right here is selling right here. This right here, they've convinced a lot of people over like a week right here. That they were selling and then they pushed price up took out that liquidity right there and then same thing they place and sell orders the banks pushing price down on purpose and then right here it is the area where they're actually you can physically see it via price action starting to push actual price up so you have a bunch of buy orders right here um getting ready to go down which is why um, this is getting ready to actually have a structure break and create high um, so i already already saw that getting ready to happen in my personal opinion, based on the last couple of candles from the, my entry, um, last eight hours, this is definitely going to maybe reject here one more time. And if it doesn't, then that, this candle is going to end up being bullish. And, it, you know, structure break right here, which is another confirmation. And then we will have all profit from there. Pretty easy stuff. Um, yeah, I just want to break down that entry. You know, basic Fibonacci entry, com basic confluence, um, things like that. Um, it's just um, crazy that when you know once you actually develop a skill, you have you have an eye for things like this. So the whole point is to like learn to learn a strategy and then train your eye to see the things that you need to see in order to make this the decisions that you need to make. And so you can have a higher win rate than you do. Um, so kind of be careful about see that's what happens when you do too much. Be careful about like actually like you know where you place your stop loss and things like that. I'm a swing trader, so 30 to 50 pips is my range. Um, depending, sometimes it's you know, if I'm like trading Great British Pound New Zealand Dollar, it'll be a little bit more because that's a more volatile pair. But, you know, you mitigate your risk by actually taking the time to look at what's going on so that you can get a more precise entry. You can see that I looked to the left at what has been going on and then you can gauge what's going to happen by what has been going on. You know, it's almost like you can tell the future. Um, so, yeah, that's that's exactly what my thought process was behind this. And this analysis literally took me about, I would say, about 10 minutes to do, you know, after I've drawn in everything and, you know, I, I zoom into where price is and I'll go to get the study, you know what I mean? Um, what, what's been happening, you know, what's, what, what's going on, you know what I mean? So what, how can I actually get into this pair based on where price currently is positioned? Do I have an opportunity for injury? If the answer is yes, then you pick the opportunity like I did. And if the answer is no, then you wait for another opportunity, maybe next week if you're a swing trader, um, maybe not, maybe, you know, you won't have an opportunity at all, which, you know, sometimes that is the case. So with that being said, and, and you know, if that's the case, just move on to the next pair. You know what I mean? You don't have to sit here and be like reliant on um, one pair or be emotionally attached to one pair. There are so many pairs out there that you, know, you can get into where you, there's not an opportunity to win one. There's going to be two more opportunities somewhere else on two other pairs. So if USD, DJPY didn't work out, um, then I wouldn't even be mad. So like Swiss Frank, JPY, I've been trying to get into this all week since Monday. I haven't been able to I have a limit order set right here, you know, based on golden zone fib. This is an old resistance level, an old level of liquidity. So I'm coming, I'm expecting them to come back and take out this liquidity right here since this candle is pretty bearish. Um, and then if and when they do, then they'll have to retest this area. And um, that would give me my wick entry that I kind of desire. Pretty easy stuff. So like I've been trying to get into this all week because this is going, this would have been 535 pips for me. So you know, trying to trying to max maximize my pips, but they haven't. I you know missed up maybe an opportunity or two, and then this is my third time trying to get into this pair. Um, so we'll see what kind of what happens and where this goes. But um, I only have EJ and NZD JPY to actually look at this morning. Um, and if I don't see any opportunities, that's fine because I got two opportunities yesterday for some sniper entries, um, which you know it's great. So what's great? Another great thing about swing trading and all these ones in the red are swing trades that I'm in. <laughs> That's one great thing about swing trading, and uh, is be you know if you don't if you miss an opportunity, like, yeah, it sucks, but like you have so many you know so many other trades running from the other week. Remember, 
quality over quantity. I don't, you know, like this, I missed my entry and I didn't get in because there's no point. You know, I like to have specific entries, for example, this right here. Let me delete this Fibonacci for the moment. Um, this right here would have been a perfect Fibonacci entry. You do it from the impulse move up to the wick. And it didn't quite, I actually, did, from there, it didn't quite reach the golden zone. So I wouldn't have even counted that as an entry. Um, let me, Um, but you know, lining it up where it's at now, um, you can see that you had you know a retest of the golden zone, um, and I just drew it from um, from this last impulse move. Now, really, I could draw it from here, and it wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, and you could get in there too. That's actually technically the last impulse move because you know I need a straight like straight you know fluid impulse move not like up down up you know what i mean so um pretty easy stuff we're gonna um, actually probably adjust that uh adjust that uh that entry so um yeah see you guys later